Good. So good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming to my session. Uh, as you can tell, I'm uh, Joe Joomla from joejoomla.com. And yes, my name really is Joe. Uh, today, we're going to have some fun, and you're going to hear uh, some things about business that uh, come more from uh, an emotional side of things. And uh, you will uh, hear, and we've already heard great information about different business models, uh, different ideas for businesses and all that. But I'm going to be approaching things from a slightly different point of view. Uh, I do want to give you just a little bit of background about myself. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, uh, joejoomla.com has been online since 2005. At that point in my time, I was actually employed full time with the National Association in Canada, where I'm from, and I was responsible for uh, the technology. My title was the Communications Director. I was one of the directors of a large uh, charitable organization, and they brought me in, and one of my projects was to um, manage change in technology for them. They were using outdated proprietary technology. Uh, they had to make a change, and I was uh, working to help them come to a modern enterprise system, which was also proprietary, uh, and it was a uh, Microsoft-based product out of the United States. A very, very expensive um, endeavor for this association. And it was at that time that I discovered Joomla. And uh, my frustration with getting uh, simple features like a search in, uh, you know, in the software in a database, I figured, well, you know, this enterprise system all runs off a database. So should search not already be an implemented feature? And th the answer was like, no, you have to pay for the customization uh, to create that feature, and it was very expensive. And I started seeing that, wow, right out of the box, Joomla has search. And uh, some of the things that were in Joomla, uh, I was paying in our organization m many, many dollars. So let, let me just say that the, the enterprise system that we were involved with was in the hundreds of thousands of dollars range. And uh, I, when I got into Joomla, I knew Joomla could not replace this whole thing. But it certainly did a much better job at parts of it than what this enterprise system was doing. I've held the executive positions in uh, advertising agencies. I come from sales and marketing. And I, when you go way back in my history, I was uh, trained to be a commercial artist. But I very quickly, for the majority of my career, was in sales. And marketing. So I come from that bias. That's my filtration, how to sell and how to market. And, uh, and this, this, is, uh, this is so who you're hearing. Uh, this is my website, joejoomla.com. And uh, as I say, this is uh, not the site that was up in uh, two, uh, 2005 because my first website was obviously a Joomla 1 uh, website. This is the third um, version of this website, and it's going to change again. So uh, it's a 2.5 website. The custom site was actually uh, my very, very first custom built site that I did using uh, a framework uh, built on the Matt Thomas's construct framework. And uh, my business model, the way that I work is I work with subcontractors. So I find people with specific skill set that are needed for the clients that I do work for. And I find those people that are available, and they work with me uh, and to build the projects that our customers uh, want. And I'm very hands-on uh, because I come from the uh, design, you know, uh, uh, commercial art uh, thing. I work with the clients to uh, go over what they want for, you know, in a look and feel. Uh, because I've trained in uh, advertising and marketing, I get involved in strategies because most of the time people come to you, they have no idea uh, what the website's supposed to do for them. And uh, the, 
the ones that think they know what they want uh, are making their websites their, their business strategy, and it's not. Website is a tactic, which is very different from a strategy. And so they, uh, you want the clients to be able to know what this tactical website does to support their overall strategy for the business or for their association. And um, so jojuma.com is where you will find the website. And the website's uh, incredibly popular because of blogging. And blogging is, I'm finding that uh, blogging has probably been one of the more successful things uh, that I've done. And uh, I wish I had more time to, to do more blogging. But uh, for the blogging that I do, uh, it's supported with social media uh, through Twitter and uh, my email for the uh, clients and anybody that signs up for it. It sounds all very simple, but it's actually highly effective because people come to me. I, I have had the privilege of being able to have very, very good clients come to me because I spent the time to position myself. I worked on the brand of Joe Joomla. And, you know, when I come to the first Day and Beyond event last year, uh, lots of people recognized this uh, Super J logo. They heard of Joe Joomla and they were finally getting to meet me for the first time. So lots of people knew about Joe Joomla in one way or another. And it was all just because of the efforts of, you know, branding a site. It got attention, and then when people came to me, I made good choices about who I did work for. And this is something that you're going to find out um, that is very, very important. My, uh, if you want to go to the blog, it's called Sound Off. My tagline is, everybody has an opinion. Here's mine. What's yours? I invite you. I get to sound off and say what I think about Joomla and things at large but I also give you an opportunity to say your piece as well, too. So today we're going to talk about your Joomla business dream. And this dream is uh, primarily for people who want to be somewhere different than where you currently are. You have a dream. You may not all, you know, most of the people in this room, you're, you're already in business, but there will be a lot of people who will hear this who were where I was uh, with uh, just the thought that what if I could be in business for myself? What would that be like? And, and, and that was both an exciting and terrifying moment because uh, that is the moment that you have to make a decision. And some people are forced into the decision just simply because, because of the, the economics of the, where they live. And if you find yourself in a position where, oh, I, I, I got to go and get a, another job, or maybe I should work for myself, uh, you will be faced just like I was with uh, some, some of the things that we're going to talk about today. Maybe you don't want to be in your own business. Maybe you want to be full-time with a good Joomla business and do what you love to do. This would be the right talk for you if you're at that place in that moment in time because everything starts with a dream. Dreams are powerful. If you have a dream, the thing that happens when it comes to you is you get excited and it brings you joy when you have that dream because it means that uh, something that you're currently not doing is going to possibly be done and it's what you want to do and so two things excitement and joy and those two things you never lose track of because they are very very important the dreams come they make you excited they give you joy and then if while you're pursuing your dream the excitement and the joy seems to leave that is a big red flag that you need to make an adjustment because your dream is being challenged so you have to say how do I feel right now about what I'm doing am I excited and am I full of joy uh, about what I'm doing. Take your pulse. I'm a happy guy. I love what I do. 
and I'm in a good spot, or I'm really unhappy, I'm really stressed out, I'm not having any fun anymore, and now uh, this is a good place for you to be to hear what you do. You spend so much time working, so much of your time, and your time is limited. Why would you do something that you do not like to do? That's a hard thing to hear when you're faced with a uh, terrifying proposition of being in business for yourself. It's like, oh, people always say, do what you love to do. And the first thing that happens is you're challenged with the thought of, but how am I going to support myself? You know, some people's dreams are to do music, to, to dance, to, to sing. That's what their real dream is. And they never pursue it because they are faced with what we call the dream robbers. And, uh, but when you have a dream and you're ready to go, you're in a good spot because a great place to be is when you have nowhere to go but up. A great place to be is when you have nowhere to go but up. That's the most exciting time, that, uh, the time that brings you the most joy, and uh, you have to protect that. And one of the bigger problems is that people don't understand that when you start pursuing your dream, success doesn't mean that you explode and you, you skyrocket and you're uh, uh, powerfully successful very, very quickly. That's actually uh, a danger. Uh, managing your growth is very, very important, and it's okay to be small. Do not despise small beginnings or humble beginnings, and do not be worried about growing really, really quickly, because managed growth is far better than explosive, out-of-control out growth, which can do really, really uh, big, big, big damage. As long as your needs are being met and your clients' needs are being met, that is a, a good growth factor. Guard your dream. And this is where a lot of people fail. They don't guard the dream. When I first, in 2005, when JoeJudenLid.com got set up, there were people that were way more talented than I was. They still are. And they came and they helped me. Oh, this guy named Joe Judenlid is setting up this website. And he's got a forum. And, uh, and they're having fun over there, and they all went over uh, there to have a good time, to learn together, to uh, build a community. It was kind of like a little subset community of Joomla.org. They were all involved in Joomla.org, but we came over to JoeJoomla.com because it was a gas and we had fun. And people were helping me. I couldn't do what I did without their help, and I was intimidated by how talented they were. And they were just getting going in their dreams. And some of them started setting up their own businesses. And I would support their business because I was admiring their, you know, their entrepreneurship. And then I would see these very, very talented people. Some of them get into business and it would take off and then fail. And then I would see other people who would talk about their dream and never pursue it. And all kinds of uh, disasters along the way and I step back to go what is going on here and uh, I realized that what was going on is that they came up against a dream robber that robbed them of their dream and it stopped their dream from coming to pass and this can still happen to you if you are in a big business today if you get uh, hijacked by a dream robber it will be a very negative thing on your business. So uh, I identified three main dream robbers. We're going to talk about these three dream robbers briefly. And uh, if you go away from here today and you know that you are being attacked by a dream robber, then you need to do something about it. Now, the funny thing about dream robbers is this, that they exist solely because you have a dream. It sounds funny, but uh, it's like this. I remember reading a news story. Uh, a criminal organization in Canada got busted, and they were doing all kinds of criminal activity through a bulletin board for uh, counterfeiting, and they were swapping uh, uh, 
stolen property, buying and selling uh, on the black market, and they got raided by the RCMP, you know, the Mounties with the red suit and the hats and right the horse. They got busted, and the whole thing got shut down, and the main um, people running it uh, were now faced uh, with uh, the, the justice system. And one of these people, one of the partners in this business, was very, very bold. And he went to the media, and he was trying to make this case. He said, um, I'm actually going to sue this government because they are uh, taking away my ability to earn a living. You see, I'm a criminal. And uh, without criminals, you would have no need for a police department or a justice system or the legal system. I'm actually a benefit to society because without criminals, you wouldn't have employment in all of those sectors. And I sat back and I thought, what a weird point of view. But it taught me something when it came to identifying the dream robbers. The dream robbers are just like this guy, this criminal. They come after you just because that's their job. So three kinds of dream robbers that we're going to talk about today. And they are the negative seed planter. This is a, a highly efficient organization. And it's a, like Joomla, it's a volunteer organization. And many of the people that you know work for this organization, and most of them unknowingly, your parents, your spouse, your co-workers, your friends, and your siblings may all work for the Negative Seed Planting Organization Dream Robber Association. The second uh, dream robber is the bad decision maker or the indecisive person. Same uh, thing, ditches on both sides. So this is you cooperating with the dream robbers because you fall prey to bad decision making or you're an indecisive person and can't make a decision. And the third one we're going to talk about, and this is a killer, and a lot of people, this one sneaks up on them and it destroys businesses. It destroys more than just businesses. It destroys uh, lives. It's called an unbalanced lifestyle. And we're going to talk about that one as well, too. Uh, so the first one is the negative seed planters. These are the words that get placed in your mind that you cannot do your dream. You are not talented enough. You are not good enough. You are not something, something that's planted in your mind and you buy it and it robs you of your dream. First thing that happens is your joy goes out the window. Somebody, you, you, know, you share your story. I'm going to be in business, or I'm going to increase my business, or I'm going to be successful in a business, and we're going to have you know, you know, 25 employees in five years, that's our goal. And somebody comes along and says, you can't do it. And the thing that you have to guard against every single day is be careful what you hear. Do not accept the negative dream robber. It is coming your way just simply because you have a dream. You all know this person, Marilyn Monroe. Isn't it interesting? She was an incredibly successful person in the entertainment business, and yet people who were in the business said to her that uh, she wasn't pretty or talented enough to be an actress. That's insane. Saying, but you know what? She was smart enough not to listen to that, and she was able to beat the dream robber. I picked this uh, particular information up from this website, businessinsider.com. There's the URL right there. There's uh, many other examples, people from business, highly successful people. Uh, you probably all heard these facts before. People who did not allow a negative thought to become a thought that they took uh, personal uh, possession of. Because the minute you take personal possession of you can't do it or you're not good enough, you are now um, being defeated by a dream robber. Trust me, it happens to all of us. It's happening to me all the time. I see this crowd and I go, wow, all these people, you know, uh, why am I successful? You know, uh, they have more talent. 
uh, that's a, a dream robber coming your way to get you in trouble. And if you buy it, you are allowing yourself to be oppressed. Uh, the, uh, the other one that I would like to say, uh, bad decision making, right, or indecisive person. So this is, this is important. You're highly influenced by the people that you associate with. So take a look at this gentleman here. If you want to be a successful motorcyclist and you want to be really successful in this culture, then you would associate with this individual because this individual is highly successful in that culture. But why would you hang around someone that is not what you want to be? Point being is who's on your Skype buddy list? Who are you spending time in social media with? Who are you spending time with in general? If you're not spending time with the people that are what you would like to be, then you're going to be influenced by the people that you are associating with, and that is a very, very bad decision. Let me take it a little bit different slant here for a moment. Another bad decision and bad association. I was uh, a very, very successful salesperson for many years in a large uh, multimedia organization in Western Canada. My job was business development. When they hired me, it was, you're getting hired, we're not giving you any, any accounts, you just go out and bring business that we don't already have. And that was my challenge and I loved it and they looked after me. And so I went to all of these different companies looking for business in this one particular company that I went to and the owner always entertained me because I came from a good company. I was representing high quality products and services and I would go into his office and he would always say to me that I can get what you are providing from your competitors at a much lower cost. If you are willing to lower your price and match theirs, then we will give you business. And I looked at what it was that he wanted me to do from a price point of view. I understood my, my business and I thought, I cannot be profitable doing work at these prices. And I also understood, and neither can my competitors. And I would say to him, no, I'm sorry, but we will not do uh, business with you at those prices because we can't possibly be um, profitable. And we have to be profitable because if we're not profitable, we can't keep on the cutting edge of technology. We can't recapitalize with our equipment, which is expensive. We can't pay people who are really good at what they do, which is making our products and our services uh, very, very high quality. And he would say, okay, and uh, I would leave, and uh, I would never get a sale from that company. Every time I go back, it was the same thing. If you lower your prices to match what we're getting them from, our competitors would give you business, and I always walked away and said no. Then one day, this company went out of business. The reason they went out of business is because their suppliers could not recapitalize. They could not, uh, they went bankrupt. They were, uh, not wise, they made very bad decision to sell based on price and when their suppliers went out of business, now this company had no one to do their work because they couldn't even afford to buy the products and services from the companies that were still around and so consequently they went out of business. Interesting thing, a couple of months after all that happened to this company, I was at an airport uh, getting on a flight that this gentleman was also on and at first he was very embarrassed to see me and he was trying to make it so that I didn't see him but it was unavoidable because he's a big boy and uh, and when he realized that I wasn't hostile and that I wasn't going to embarrass him or, or anything and that uh, he didn't owe me money uh, he you know I went over said hi to him and he agreed to sit next to me on the flight and we had a really wonderful conversation and during the conversation this is what he said to me he says I always really admired your company he says you guys picked who you work for you picked your clients he says and we never did that and now I realize that that is the reason that we were not successful 
you were wise, you picked your clients, the ones that you, who you were going to do business with. We just did business with anybody who would do it with us, and consequently, that was a bad decision, and uh, we went out of business. The other part of it is indecision is uh, the other half of the bad decision maker. Indecision will paralyze you. I was in a job interview with a uh, vice president of uh, operations of a large company, and this person said to me, we only hire decision makers. And I said, okay, well, that's an interesting philosophy. What does that mean? He says, well, he says, uh, even if a person makes a bad decision, they're decision makers, and they go down the path, and they realize this is the wrong decision. I made a wrong decision. You know what they do? They stop, they turn around, they go the other way, and now they're going in the right direction. He says, we never, never criticize someone for making uh, a wrong decision. But what we will not tolerate is people who are indecisive because they will go nowhere. They are paralyzed, they're frozen, you have to micromanage them. Tell him, you know, do this, do that. He said, uh, we can't have that. So indecision is uh, wrong, and you need to not fear because that's the, the root of indecision is fear. Do not fear. And do not fear doesn't mean that you do stupid things. It's just do not fear means that you don't give in to the irrational idea of fear itself. Fear is irrational, uh, and I see it happening all around me. Uh, the young people are, are particularly prey to this fear. They go, oh, I'm not qualified to go and work for that company because they say right up front that you must have uh, three years as a computer science degree from you know uh, one of these really big universities. I don't have a master's degree. I need this, I need that and they are immediately, don't even try, they're paralyzed to uh, go and approach that person. Well, I will tell you this, is that that is a, what I call a smoke screen, and that is uh, something that you should never, never fall prey to. This is my story in that one. I was uh, in the graphic art industry for a short period of time as a headhunter. My job was to, uh, place executives and salespeople, match them up with companies. This one company I went to uh, said they wanted to have a salesperson join their company. And when we had our initial conversation, they said, here is the requirements. And one of the requirements, which I call a showstopper, is a requirement that they made, which was this that they would not hire somebody unless that person was currently in the industry that they were in, worked for a competitor, and had sales to bring. They had determined we want sales, and we want somebody to come in here with sales immediately. If they don't have it, it's a showstopper. So now my job was to go to see whether the candidate that I represented was qualified or would be a good match for this company. So I went to the company and I sat in this office with this, uh, this uh, gentleman that was running the business and I interviewed him about the culture of the company, the history of the company, and what the company was like. And as I was talking to him, I went, wow, I really like this company. And I had a thought, I would love to work for this company. And so I snuck in this question during the interview. I said to this gentleman, it's the person that I'm representing is not the right fit for your company. But I have someone, <coughs> although this person not currently in the industry, that they would be successful in your business. Would you hire that person? And Immediately, no, the person must bring sales already, must be in the industry and bring sales with them. So I thought, okay, we went on. A couple of minutes later, I asked the same question, slightly different, but it was the same question. If, uh, would you be willing to hire somebody that's not currently in the industry, doesn't have immediate sales to bring in, but has what it takes to be successful in your business? No, I asked it a third time, a few minutes later, slightly different, but it was the exact same question. Would you be willing to hire somebody that's currently not 
in the industry, doesn't have sales to bring, but got what it takes to be successful in your business and consistently, not even a hesitation, no, we would not hire that person. So at the end of this interview, we were done. I recognized that the person that I was representing would not be a good fit for this company for other reasons, various reasons. And I said, I'm gonna go back to my office and I will uh, continue to uh, search for an appropriate person for your business. And he's walking me out the door and we're going down this hallway and he's behind me and we get halfway down the hallway and I hear this voice behind me say, kind of low, but just loud enough for me to hear, would you be interested in working for a company like ours? And I stopped. Boom, right in my track, stop, did a 180 turn, looked him straight in the face, and I said, can we go back to your office for a very quick conversation? And he said, sure. Back to the office we go. He shuts the door, he gets around his big desk. He's a big guy, he's six foot six. He weighs about 295 pounds. He's wearing a dark suit, very intimidating figure, authoritative person. And he, and he sits down and I looked him right in the eye, all 135 pounds of me at the time. That's how big I was, this skinny little guy. Looked him straight in the eye and said, I would like to know why during the course of our conversation, when I asked you no less than three times, would you be willing to hire somebody that currently is not in the industry and has no sales to bring in, but has what it takes to be successful in your business? Would you hire that po person? And each time you were consistent, you said no. So what made you change your mind? He starts moving papers around on his desk and his ears are getting red and he's I could tell the wheels are going around in his head. He's trying to find an explanation. Suddenly, he just bangs his head, hand on the table and goes, boom, and he just starts laughing. He goes, I like you. <laughs> and I got hired by that company, and I did some of my most exciting sales ever brought business to that company that they never had before. Now, he had to justify the hiring choice to a sh uh, one of the, the main shareholders of that business who said, well, wait, wait a minute, he, he doesn't have any sales to bring. But you know what? He said, uh, I recognize that what was sitting in front of me was something our company needed very, very much. And that if I let you walk out the door, I might never got, get the opportunity to have it. And what were those qualities? I had enthusiasm. I was uh, tenacious, uh, passion. I had all the things. I was alive, motiva motivated, personable. I had all the things that he knew that if I could just bring this person into our organization, that person will influence the other people in the organization with the qualities that they possess. I became uh, a very successful salesperson in that industry, and it was the start of a great, great career. So the showstoppers never allow this roadblock that says you must have this, you must have this degree, you must do this, you must, all of those things that somebody wrote them down, but you know what, they don't know you and what you bring to the table. And so you have to be able to get past that dream robber and they go, what are you doing here? You don't have a degree. And then you just simply tell them who you are, what you're capable of, why you're there, and, and have that confidence in yourself. Believe in yourself, believe in your dream. And I know this for a fact, all the people that I worked for previously in all of my previous jobs, I was uh, privileged to always be hired by the owner of the company. And so I had special relationships with people who are very, very successful entrepreneurs, and I got to listen to them and, and hear what they had to say, and they would tell me things that made me realize that these are real people, they have emotions, that a lot of times some of these people go themselves without a paycheck so that all of the employees would get paid because they're washing the cash flow. And I realized, you know what, these people, everybody looks at them 
puts them on a pedestal, but they're real people. They're just like you and me, that they're just a person that makes good decisions and, and is responsible. And when you see that, you realize that uh, they are looking for other people like them. If somebody walks into your office, Sarah, and you see yourself in them, you go, wow, I'm going to hire that person. And you may even hire that person, even though that person wasn't what you were looking for initially, but suddenly it diamond in the rough or a gem is sitting in front of you that's you your dream will propel you greatly last uh, thing that uh, we need to talk about uh, from the dream robbers is um, unbalanced lifestyle this uh, picture here represents a barrel filled with a substance and that substance that this barrel is filled with is literally a substance that runs through your body called serotonin Serotonin is like uh, an endorphin. It is a, a part of, of what makes you alive and what keeps you healthy and it's good. And if you allow the serotonin of your body to become depleted and it gets depleted by things that drain you, if you allow things to drain you and you ignore warning signs like this first warning sign, you're doing business and you are anxious and it goes unchecked and you don't do anything about it and you start having anxiety attacks you are in really serious trouble then if you allow it to go further you deplete your uh, healthiness because of an unbalanced lifestyle that you're working so hard you are in this situation where you are going to have an emotional breakdown and the precursor to that is that you really, you get set off really fast, really easy. Your emotions is a hot button. You are, are now not able to withstand the kinds of pressures that you could when you were full and filled with life, when, with serotonin. If you ignore that, you are headed for this a nervous breakdown. I have seen this actually happen to people, good people, uh, uh, software developer friend of mine very very skilled fellow wound up with something called shingles does anybody recognize that word shingles and uh, it was a horribly debilitating situation and he got into it because he was working full-time in his job doing software development and then he had a dream and the dream became a full-time job and he wanted to develop software for the accounting industry and he was working so hard trying and he even got investors which put him under pressure to meet deadlines and he was working so hard that he was not enjoying life anymore not having any fun and got completely drained and he told me uh, that if you had ever had chicken pox when you were a child growing up, that you're highly susceptible to the shingles because it's residing in your body and your nerve endings. And what's keeping it latent and from attacking you is uh, things like uh, a good level of serotonin and good endorphins in your body. And then when they uh, no longer are being kept in chat, uh, check, they attack you. This is a horrible dream robber and it will kill you business. So what you need to do is you need to make sure that even though we all work hard and even though we all know that we have to be responsible and do things that drain us, you cannot avoid it. You need to be able to have what it takes to endure during those tough times. So. You need to be filling yourself up with things that fill you because you are subject to things that drain you. Now, on the bottom, some, some of the things that drain me that I don't get enjoyment out of is, the, you know, uh, tough accounting sessions. That will drain me. Clients from hell drain me. And I'm really quick to end those relationships because they drain me heavily and I don't need that drain. Uh, writing actually drains me. I'm not uh, a natural writer. I have to work at it. Could, so can you imagine I blog? And it, you know, some people can put out a blog in 40 minutes. 
mine are not 40 minute blogs. They, there's a lot more that goes into it. And certain kinds of meetings uh, drain me. I'm in a meeting and I'm, I can't wait to get out of this particular meeting because it's sucking the life out of me. But you can't avoid these things but you can endure them and you can get through them much easier when you are filled up with life. And so the kinds of things that fill me up is uh, visiting with my family. I really love visiting with my family. That would be my kids, that would be you know, my brother, that would be other uh, members. I love going for drives. That really fills me up. Uh, I love going for drives so much I bought a really cool car to go for drives in. And my wife and I, we have our best conversations when we go on drives. And if, if my car sits in the garage during the good weather for a full week and I haven't gotten in it, I feel it calling me. <laughs> so I have a really, really nice car, dream car, get in, go for drives, fills me up, uh, socializing with friends. I'm one of those people that gains energy, gets filled with serotonin uh, and endorphins by being around people. But when I went into business for myself, I found myself isolated doing work in my office. And the only people I was interacting with were like people on my Skype buddy list. And if it wasn't for them, I would have gone insane. I would have gotten out of the business. I like to watch movies, you know, quick one and a half hour, fluffy entertainment, laugh. I laugh at things and, and it fills me up. Now here's the key is that Sometimes when we start getting drained, we stop doing these other things. And that is a dream robber being very successful in your life. You have to schedule in time to fill yourself up so that you are able to endure those things that drain you because you get through them much easier. There would be times where I could do a whole evening of accounting, paying bills, doing all that stuff, and, and it doesn't bother me. But if I'm drained, that evening kills me and I'm, I'm in big trouble because of the dream robber. So we talked about uh, three kinds of dream robbers. We talked about the negative C planner, the one that says you can't do it. You can't make that new software. You can't uh, hire more employees. You can't take your business to be successful. You can't change your business model. You can't, you can't, you can't. You buy that. That's like you walking into a jail voluntarily and saying to the person, lock me up please in this cell and throw the key away and I will just sit here and wallow in the mire. That's what that's like when you buy that. So many people will not listen to the dream robber and the dream robber gets frustrated and they move to a different tactic. And the different tactic would be, bad business decision. Like for example, you have a, a major client and all these stories I'm telling you, by the way, are true stories. They happen to business associates of mine and I've seen these things in real life. So uh, really great successful advertising agency specializing in web work, digital work. 14 employees have a million dollar account of which nine of the people in that company are dedicated to that account. Someone manages to get the account away from that company and the dream robber attacks because the business owners say, we will look not successful if we cut all this staff and go from like 14 people, you know, and, and remove uh, nine and a half, five people left. And so they hung on to the people and then now the dream robbers are really ganging up on them because their finances are getting uh, drained and, and pulled out. And eventually they're facing bankruptcy because of a bad, bad decision. Those nine people didn't have a job before that account was uh, won for that company. And so when they got the account, nine people got employed. When that account went, nine people would be a good decision to keep the company healthy, nine people will be let go. You hate to do that, but you have to do that. These are the hard, good choices that you make to stay in business. And um, when you make business decisions, you have to make a 
a decision right up front. Who determines if you are successful? And I'll tell you, the person that turn your, uh, determines your success is you because success means different things to different people. Why did you get in business for yourself? If you got in business for yourself so that you have control over your own time, and you get into business and you have control over your own time, you are successful. If you got in business for yourself because you wanted to be able to pick and choose your own projects, and that's what you get to do, you are successful. No one else determines your success. You're the one that determines, I am successful. You are already successful until the dream robber comes along and gives you reasons why you're not successful, and you buy those reasons. Oh, I'm not as big as that company. I'm not growing as fast. All these things, that's the dream robber in action. And you have to, uh, to make sure that you don't fall prey to that. What did you get in business for in the first place? And what motivates you? This is really, really great. Don't forget, we said, when you are just getting started and you have nowhere to go but up, that's a great place to be. But you need something that will motivate you. And I'm very, very surprised uh, how many people don't have something that they anchor themselves on that motivates them. And if you don't have a, a thing that motivates you, you can use mine. Here's what motivates me. The day that I am taking my last breath on this earth, what will be my last thought? And I don't think I want my last thought to be, I wish I spent more time at the office. But I think about that. What will be my last thought on my final breath, on my last day on the earth? And if that last one is a regret, then the dream robbers really got you. And now there's nothing that you can do about it. So don't be robbed by a dream robber. Be somebody that knows why I want to pursue my dream. Do you not let fear stop you? The unknown is uh, irrational. The fear that comes from the unknown, all those rope, they come, don't forget, they come simply because you have a dream. Just like that criminal who said, hey, I'm good for society. I provide employment for the justice system. The dream robber says, I'm here because you have a dream. So if you have a dream, and you're not pursuing it, what are you waiting for? I say go for it, because you're going to be challenged by the dream robbers anyways. I suggest that you go for it. I have one request. That's pretty much what I wanted to uh, share with you today. There, I could take each one of those points and I could spend all kinds of times and, and, and explode these things out for you and you're more than welcome to get in touch with me and I will uh, share some things with you. I, I used to ask people or tell people that I saw that were just getting going like in sales and I said when you wake up one morning and, and you don't know why you're doing what you're doing and, 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 and you're faltering, that's the day you phone me and I'm going to be the guy that talks you through it, gives you the pep talk to help you pass it because it happens to everyone and it's not unusual. You know what? Hardly anybody ever took me up on that. And everybody identified and I said, hey, call me when you're feeling like that. And they didn't, and they didn't last. And they now bounce from one job to another job to another job. And their dreams are being sucked away and they're dying on the inside. Don't let that happen for you. Here's my request. I am, this is a page on LinkedIn. And these are the things that I am being, uh, um, you know, what do they call it, the acknowledged for? Endorsed for, right? You can see that I'm be being endorsed for CMS, web development, Joomla, all that good stuff up there. But down here on the bottom, uh, very low, is uh, presenter in public speaking. And if you don't mind helping me push this up a little bit, you are more than welcome to uh, be, you know, friend me on, on LinkedIn. But do this, because if I don't know who you are, Here's the secret of me accepting you as an associate on LinkedIn. Just put in you saw me at JAB or just put JAB13 in the I'd like to connect with you. Boom, I will connect with you and uh, really look forward to getting to know you a lot better and helping you 
stay motivated and avoid the dream robbers. Thank you very, very much for your time today. We're done. We went over, but...